we've been started with that. But welcome, my friends. And thank you for coming along on this ride. And today we're going to talk about, we're supposed to talk about the risks of radio. But I just remembered that I should have titled it, maybe I'll change the title later on, but we should title this the 300K Party. 300K. So this channel has now reached 300,000 subscribers. So that's pretty incredible. So very, very incredible achievement here. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to all the new subscribers, many of whom came because of the uh, radio, uh, ra the radio, the hidden radio uh, video. So somebody was asking, radio don't spy on me. Well, then maybe you didn't watch that video. So anyway, that's, uh, uh, that's a lot to celebrate about, you know, 300K. And that puts me in the realm of all the big channels and privacy. There's, we're, we're all now in the 300K level. So, so that puts me at equal to the highest one uh, in this in this field. So that's very very good. So, so thank you, thank you for for supporting me. And the format for tonight, as it is with every live stream, is I talk for a few minutes, typically half an hour, and then I listen to you and ask for your comments and then we do a q a section there and we go on for another hour with that so those for those who don't want to listen to the q a section you can just cut out at 30 minutes or roughly depending what i'm talking about you can just cut off there and say okay that's enough so that's up to you but lots of tidbits are often picked up if you in every live stream I get asked a question and and people learn a lot about little tidbits about about what uh, what's going on hello from Ontario and I know somebody was from New Zealand and uh, I saw North Carolina and all the guys I already know from the places I know them from New York uh, Illinois and so on so welcome Welcome, my friends, and the, the topic is about radio, and specifically, it's about the hidden radios, and somebody made a comment on my videos, it's not hidden. What are you talking about hidden? There's nothing hidden about it. That's not what I mean. So, I mean, you know, I get, I get these constant trolls, so, but I want, want to make it clear, it's about hidden functionality in radio hidden functionality in radio so what happens is you bought an Amazon Echo why did you buy an Amazon Echo well that's not a smart move as it is but just let's just ask you the question why did you buy an Amazon Echo and of course the answer is you wanted to do speech AI you talk to it and you can tell it to play music and so on and buy stuff and answer questions at the dinner table and thinks that uh, it's not enough that you you know you don't want to go tap 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 on your on your phone at the dinner table. You have to share with everyone too, and all of you can talk to Alexa. So that's the reason that you bought the Amazon Echo. What you of course what you didn't realize is that now the Amazon Echo is doing things that are beyond what it was originally purchased for. So the Amazon, the Amazon Echo and your ring cameras are doing things in the background. It's actually doing work for Amazon, not for you. They're doing functions that have nothing to do with you. And they're basically using your device, using your bandwidth, and basically using it as a forwarding device. So instead of the internet, instead of a direct internet connection, devices, IoT devices, can now talk to other devices of the same type, the same using the same program, the same operating system, so to speak, and be able to pass messages. And you can actually extend this network to an indefinite distance. For example, you can cover a whole city as long as there's a way to jump from point to point. And that's the purpose of what is called a mesh, it's peer to peer. All it needs is to transmit if somebody's around within a quarter of a mile to half a mile then it will retransmit well and unfortunately for us 
there's probably more Amazon Echoes than every half a mile. I'm sure just in my neighborhood here, I wouldn't be surprised if half the people here had an Echo. Wouldn't be surprised at all. So there could be, you know, just in my area here, you know, I'm talking in the hundreds of yards, not in miles, not in half a mile, but in yards, you know, within a hundred yards, there's probably a lot of echoes. And if you live in an area with an apartment complex, there's going to be a gazillion echoes in there too. So because of that, the, the, uh, the problem is that you did not know when you purchased these devices that they were going to be used for this purpose. So what it is, it's a network, it's a new network that kind of forwards data from point to point. So you're saying, well, so what? What is it forwarding? So Amazon Echo is the first, first one that is uh, activating a general network. There's already a network that was activated right before it, and that was Apple AirTag. So Apple activated the AirTag network. So they're, they're basically using your phone. So your your iPhones, and I don't have an iPhone, but uh, your if this were an iPhone, the iPhone would then be the one doing the forwarding. It's going to listen for signals and it's going to forward the the signal to Apple. So it's going to listen around for signals on the radio and it's going to then send that over the internet to Apple. The one on Amazon is a little bit different because the Amazon one is not point to point. It's not from device because on the Amazon, on the Apple one, it's AirTag to iPhone, iPhone direct to Apple, and then back down to whoever owns the AirTag. But it always gets centralized, so it's like Apple, I mean, sorry, uh, iPhone detects AirTag, goes directly to, to Apple. Now, the Amazon Echo doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. The, the way it is is... It takes signals from all around you, from any device, a device that may have nothing to do with um, Amazon directly. Amazon hasn't opened it up, but they will open it up so that anyone can use their network as long as they pay the network fee of some sort over AWS, I'm sure. But currently, the only users of the Amazon Sidewalk, that's what this mesh network is called, Amazon Sidewalk. The only users will be people from Amazon, I mean, Amazon itself. That will be the only user base. And, and at the moment, the Amazon Sidewalk is made up only of Amazon Echoes and Ring cameras. Now, it's questionable about Blink. Blink apparently is owned by Amazon. So it's not clear what's in Blink. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make an assumption that that will also be active at some point. But in the documentation from from Amazon, it's really specifically certain models of Ring cameras, and then certain models of Amazon Echoes. Basically, every Amazon Echo since 2019. So if you have a Amazon Echo older than that, then it might not have that capability. Now. What, what exact, so at the moment, the, what is the Amazon sidewalk gonna be used for? It's gonna be used to do uh, the tile tracker. So fairly innocuous, fairly mild reasoning at the moment, kind of like the equivalent of Apple AirTag. So every time a tile tracker spotted by an Echo or a ring camera, it will be uh, forwarded to to uh, Amazon, but if there's no internet, and this is really the important point here, if there's no internet, the signal will be passed from point to point, from one Amazon device, Echo or Ring, to another Amazon device, until <clears throat> one of these captures it for the internet. So I did those two videos. I did a video on Apple AirTag, I did a video on Skynet, which is the Amazon sidewalk, and later on, I did another video about Bluetooth, and then finally I discovered more and more. This is what kind of an expanding story, because it turns out that Apple AirTag and Amazon Sidewalk were both utilizing Bluetooth. Uh, There's a certain feature of Bluetooth called Bluetooth Low Energy, which is then what, what is used to power the Bluetooth mesh network which has its own specifications. And Bluetooth Mesh Network is new. It was only finalized in December.
So it's still new. It's still new. But when I got past that and did some more research, I was actually surprised that this was being used in a more extensive way than I actually had imagined. That there were more things than Amazon Sidewalk and Apple AirTag. And those are, well, there's Zigbee, which is actually an older one. And then there's one called Thread. Now you say, what is Thread? Thread is the one from Google. So Google powers Google Nest with another mesh network called Thread. And this one is even more sophisticated than Bluetooth. It actually doesn't use Bluetooth, it uses its own protocol. So Bluetooth is a protocol. It doesn't have to use Bluetooth. That, I just wanna make that clear because people don't understand that it, you, although Bluetooth is a well-known protocol, anybody can use that, anyone else can make up any protocol using the radio. And how does it actually work? And I tried to explain this in the video what, what I tried to explain to you is that all it needs is the FSK encoder decoder. And that is a radio signal from, uh, from these radios, as long as they have matching frequencies, and they're listening in those channels, can then look for sounds uh, called FSK. And FSK is, uh, is um, frequency, uh, what is it? Uh, shift keying frequency shift keying and so so basically there there's going to be an fm transmission a, a wide band fm transmission and then it will turn on there are actually two frequencies it will use so it will split the frequency into two and one will be a zero and one will be a one and if a, a signal is sent on one frequency and then not the other then it'll be a, one will be a zero and the other one will be a one. So they can actually do digital. And if you if you have digital, then that means that you can actually send any kind of traffic, you know, uh, digital based. You know, it could be text, could be binary, it could be anything between radios. Now what, what I was trying to explain, and this is the part that may not be clear in the progression of the videos, is because I've had so many videos about this and, and maybe uh, this is to pull it all together here. What happened was when I initially discovered the radio things happening, uh, I was looking at the phone radio working with the AirTag radio, and that was the very, very first one. And as I progressed, I was actually surprised at the amount of stuff that's going on that I didn't know about. I actually didn't know anything about this. And now it turns out that if you, for example, look at the specs of Thread, the Google one, the, they actually have chip makers there. You can actually look at the chip. And the chips have built-in radios in the bands that they want to communicate on. And the bands that are going to be used for this is typically the Bluetooth band, which is 2.402 megahertz up to about 2.408 megahertz, which is basically the right below Wi-Fi. So that's what they're... they're uh, using as their their uh, transmission base. Now they can transmit on other frequencies like 900 megahertz, they're allowed to do that in certain countries. 433 megahertz is another one. And uh, what, what I found was that most of them use 2.4 megahertz, that range right before Wi-Fi because it's supported by more countries. So some countries don't allow 433 megahertz in some countries don't allow 900 megahertz. But the, pr the premise is the same, it's just a different frequency. If it's a different frequency, you just need a different antenna. That's the, the only difference. If you go lower in frequency, your antenna has to be slightly longer. 2.4 gigahertz is a shorter antenna. 900 gigahertz, which is a little less than half, would be an antenna that's slightly twice as long. 433 megahertz would then be a four times as long of an antenna as the one on 2.4 gigahertz. So that's the only difference, antennas. So if you're able to, to put it into the circuit board, and the antenna is basically just an etched circuit board and they go loop it back and forth to make it long. So if they wanna make it, you know, do uh, be resonant on a certain frequency, they just zigzag the antenna on the little circuit board and they're very small, you know, they're very tiny. And you know, the, 
the thin wire for the antenna can be very, very small. So the, the issue is that, as it turns out, and this is what I'm trying to, to make everyone understand here, is that the radios that I'm talking about that they're using to communicate this mesh network on is actually built into many IoT devices. When you make an IoT device, you buy a CPU. The CPU actually includes this radio for 2.402 to 2.4808 uh, megahertz. It goes beyond what you expect the device to do. Since you buy an IoT device, it's Internet of Things device, it's expected to communicate over Wi-Fi. Well, that's... For, for the trolls who go out there and talk about this, I mean, it's just so dumb because they're not understanding what I'm saying. So, yes, it's hidden because there are, you did not buy these devices to talk in another channel. It's called out-of-band traffic, out-of-band. That's why it's hidden, out-of-band traffic. So the out-of-band traffic is 900 megahertz, 433 megahertz, and 2.402 to 2.408 megahertz these are all the transmission bands that are being used for communicating in multiple protocols including bluetooth low energy thread which is a completely different protocol and whatever protocol apple is using i think apple is using bluetooth ble as well and i know that amazon is also using bluetooth ble but google is not google's not using uh uh, Bluetooth BLE, it's using Thread, which is a completely different protocol. Okay, so anyone could take the source code from Google because it's open source, it's called Open Thread. So you can go in there and say, I'm going to design a completely different uh, protocol for communicating on radio using FSK. And I'm going to come up with a completely different one and, and it's going to be encrypted and no one's going to know anything about it because uh, I took the code from. Google and modified it and I'm going to put it on my devices and no one will ever know. Okay. And obviously it's not that hard to copy uh, Bluetooth because there's a standard for it and it's published and you just look at the documentation, see how it's done and how they interpret the traffic for FSK, uh, uh, the frequency shift keying. This is very simple stuff. Okay. If you, if you forget about Bluetooth, low energy or thread or any of this, this is very simple. Two radios. If you, one radio transmits ABC, this radio will see ABC. It doesn't need any kind of special programming to do this. Let me repeat again. No special programming is required for this to send ABC and for this radio to hear that. What is unique, and this is really the biggest, biggest danger here, is that this radio on an IoT device sends ABC and this radio says, oh, I'm going to take ABC and retransmit ABC to all the other devices around me, which will then retransmit over and over for a certain amount of time until it reaches everywhere. Okay, so like I said, it is possible with very simple technology to forward a message from a telephone pole put in by a city and have it transmit signals to the other side of the city where City Hall is very simple now why what would they track well uh obviously they're used to track apple air tags and tile trackers currently but they can track anything so basically anything that you can use the the frequency for can be sent through a mesh network using either one of the commercial standards or you can venture on or modify any of the existing standards so i told you that your television likely has these radios in it in some recent manufacture because they were putting it on devices, even Amazon Echoes, as early as 2019. So they could put, have put, past tense, have put devices already in newer TVs for the last couple of years and you don't know it and I don't know it and none of us know it. And they could be enabled by software to transmit in that 2.402 to 2. 48 gigahertz, for example, and then forward whatever it wants to forward. One of the things that they are actually going to do, because they're talking about it right now, 
is that the networks or the TV stations are actually going to, or the broadcast TV stations are going to listen to your TV. So when you do something to your TV, I presume when you click a channel that it's going to broadcast and a broadcast is going to send to another TV and then all the TVs will then broadcast whatever channels are watching over the air and then some central authority can then listen and say, oh, okay, so somebody's listening on these channels. And then they use that for Nielsen ratings. Okay, simple enough. And you say, well, who cares? Nielsen ratings. Okay. If you understand what I'm saying here, the difficulty of this technology is that it's very scary what can be done. Because any text can be sent ABC, ABC forward to many, many other devices. Instead of ABC, it could be sending John Smith is doing X. This device that is listening and say, oh, John Smith doing X, and then spread that around. Okay, so let, let's uh, refine that. As you know, you're already carrying RFIDs in various ways. Even your tires, tires have the, the inflation sensors that are RFID based. So your tires can then reflect back a signal that indicates uh, the tire status. And that in itself, uh, in this case, it's the tire pressure. So you send it and it responds with the tire pressure. Well, the, the point is that there is an RFID and the RFID uh, returns a unique identifier. And the unique identifier can then be attached to a person. If somebody has a listening device, and all it takes is for a transmitter to transmit a signal, the transmission can then pick up certain things. It can pick up your enhanced driver's license. It can pick up any RFID in existence. And of course, the closest one when you're in a car is, is the tire. So, so uh, uh, without any special tools, a uh, you know, a powerful, a more powerful radio can can uh, uh, track an RFID uh, roughly to 200 feet. So theoretically, they they have a theoretical range of 400 feet, but they found in practice it doesn't go beyond 200 feet. So the point is, if they if somebody puts in telephone poles with little RFID sensors, so in theory, then they could ping every car that drives by and do, do things like take your driver's license plate with a driver's, driver's license plate reader, which is very common in LA. They already put that in there. So the, I'm, I, I don't have to invent this. This is already existing. So they take the RFID reader, take the, take the uh, license plate, match it to some other RFID marker, and then all they have to do now is use ch a cheaper device to track RFIDs all over town, maybe in every uh, light pole. And it would be very inexpensive to do because they don't need a battery. They don't need much battery. They can actually run from solar so they can be indefinitely powered. And then that data can then be forwarded elsewhere. So what I'm talking about is, is technically feasible now. It's, it's quite feasible. And this is why it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not theory when I say it's, it can be done. But it is not yet there. It's not yet there. So I want to make sure that you don't panic because, no, it's not yet there. There's quite a few steps for this to happen. This is all new. This is all within a year. So it might take a year, maybe two, before somebody says, oh, we're going to use this stuff for mass surveillance and whatever else they want to do because they can flood a city with a lot of these devices for cheap. We're not there yet. They haven't done this. They're currently, they're going to be used mostly to track people using Ring and Echo. So Ring itself is the immediate danger. Ring itself is the immediate danger. For those of you, uh, I, was at, I was at my boat talking to a friend and Somebody went, came by and chatted to the friend I was talking to and said, oh, uh, you know, well, you should install a ring camera on your boat. So, you know, the idea is that you have a nice little spy camera on your boat and you can 
monitor your boat from your home and make sure that it's safe. And they were recommending, this person was recommending a ring. And of course, I kind of went, you know, I kind of went overboard because I just released a video on ring. And how do I get people to say, stop, stop, well, why are you doing this? Ring has so many surveillance things attached to it that is just different. And maybe let's include Blink in there. So let's say Blink and Ring. The thing is that they're centralizing the video. And if you, I, if every time I use the word centralize, you should panic. They are centralizing the video. So you have a ring camera, the video is gonna be centralized at Amazon headquarters, and then somebody's gonna look through that. Primarily, it's made to go to three letter agencies and, and law enforcement agencies. That's what they're gonna be using it for. But you did not buy those cameras for surveillance. They're using your device, and they're gonna use your camera for surveilling something else, including you. Every time you go in and out, your camera's going to record that and send that to Amazon. Anytime somebody goes into your house, there will be facial recognition because Amazon has the first facial recognition AI included in this. Then they're going to say, oh, okay, we know all the people. We've just facially recognized everyone in your household and we know who's coming in and out. And that's going to all be on the ring camera. Oh, yeah, we're going to give you safety because we're going to be tracking everyone. And if somebody robs your house, we're gonna facially identify people. It's like, yeah, what about all the innocent people that came by to my house? They're also gonna be all facially recognized. And this is the stuff that just, it just, to me, it's just unacceptable. Just, just unacceptable that you would even think that, you know, uh, an innocent person you invited to your house now gets scanned on facial recognition. Uh, with possibly now the potential for tracking some other identifier like a MAC address of a device which becomes a device fingerprint and then on top of that you get some RFID from an enhanced driver's license or whatever else they have on their person and then that will match and they'll say oh okay we've seen this person and then every time they go elsewhere in a similar similar device is scanning around they'll recognize the device. So this is all very, very possible, and, and uh, uh, I don't think it's actually happening yet. I could be wrong. I don't think it's happening yet, but I could be wrong, like I said. But uh, I think they're not yet ready for this because it's just started. So you got to give it some time for programmers to start you know, being assigned to this, to start using this. The, the point is the technology is there, therefore it will be used. Uh, and the technology is there to do bad, therefore bad things will be done. It, this is just the way it is, you know, the way technology is. Okay, it, it will be done. It can be done, therefore it will be done. So I'm giving you a warning. So the video is a warning. It's not telling you that it's hopeless right now, but it will be shortly. So it will be short. It's not, it's, we are not at this point yet. The problem is that when, when the network of mesh network devices are out there, and they're all connected, even if the internet goes down, they're talking to each other. Now what? So basically, a drone could be flying over a city and be giving its instructions over the airwaves using the mesh network and not even need any kind of internet connection. They could be getting instruction from Amazon or whoever sending them instructions and have it be forwarded from point to point. All it needs is to have a single device be present in enough quantity that a mesh network can be established. So it could be a TV. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be an Amazon Echo. It could be TV. So if they repurpose your TV to do this, well, everyone has a TV, sometimes multiple TVs in a home, and there's enough TVs around to create a very, very serious mesh, serious mesh network, a very, very serious one. And as you know, a mesh network could be used, I mean, a TV can also be used to listen to you on the microphone. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, so 
that's really part of the, the issue is what, what do you do with devices that are already there in existence and they repurpose them by a software update and, and they are told, well, you can make money. Uh, you can install the software and then it will be connected to by the, a three-letter agency. And we're going to pay you. The U.S. government is going to pay you or the Australian government or the New Zealand government uh, or one of the five I countries is going to pay you to, to put this software in your Samsung, LG, or Vizio TV. And, and then they repurpose it. If they know the chip is in these TVs, then we are completely zucked. So, I'm, I'm actually expressing the potential. We have a potential issue here. It's, it's a very big potential issue because we're talking about technology that once it starts and somebody starts programming to do certain things, it's not going to be reversible. We can't take it back. We're not going to be able to say, oh, uh, you know, I, I think this technology is bad. Let's take it out. How? Again, you don't even know what it's used for. You don't know. You will not know. And that's the biggest issue here is they will repurpose your devices and you won't even know. So somebody says I'm doing, uh, you know, fear mongering because... I'm talking about inaccurate things with the radios and then they they start spreading data there's some guy talking about radio frequencies and all that I was like complete BS and they were like trying to make me sound bad like I don't know what I'm talking about uh, <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> uh, I actually built these devices I actually built as, as some of you know I built uh, and sold a camera, a IoT camera, and I wrote the software for it as well, and I a security a radar security system, and on it I actually put a 433 megahertz chip, a transmitter for 433 megahertz because I wanted the devices to talk out, you know, out in the open where they don't have power, like they're running on solar. And I wanted them to transmit uh, the radar signal of who's in the area by using these. So somebody would say, I don't know, you, you don't know anything. Um, whatever. Uh, I, apparently I don't know anything, but I actually built these devices and I got them to work. So uh, I'm not selling these right now because I'm so busy with my channel and, and it, they're very hard to build because they have to all be... 3D printed and I can't build it in volume. Uh, so I was selling it for a while, but it was very hard to build in volume because of the 3D printing. Some of the 3D printing took a day, so I can only make one unit a day at that rate. That means I, at the max, I could make 300 units a year, and I said, ah, this is not gonna work. So, and I have multiple uh, 3D printers. In fact, right next to me here are two 3D printers. And, and uh, so I said, okay, I do two, then I can sell 600 units a year. Well, it's kind of pointless. I mean, it, it, it wasn't something I could do. So anyway, so yeah, I, I guess I know nothing. I, you already know I have a ham license, but more than that, I've been doing research on the frequency on the RF side for a while now. There's, I have a video where I, I put a mesh network. I did a mesh network connecting my boat to my house. Uh, a distance of about four miles, I believe. It's a video on that. <clears throat> so, and I'm using a ham radio frequency. So I have a video, I did that. So somebody said, well, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, whatever. Okay, so I'm a software developer, that's what I do. I'm also a cybersecurity expert, so that's another thing I do. So, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a very, very advanced programmer. So, so when somebody tells me I don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I, I don't, you know, so somebody told me, this guy told me, oh, I've been doing this for 15 years. And, you know, I don't want to age myself, so I don't respond. But sounds like I've been doing it before you were born. So, <clears throat> yeah. So I don't want to age myself by telling you how long I've been programming, but it's a long time. A long time. You know how people say you need ten thousand hours to get some, some, uh, 
to get mastery. I can't even count how many 10,000 hours over and over I've done in, in the tech field. This is why I'm able to do this channel because, you know, uh, maybe I have 100,000 hours. I don't know. It's, been, it's too much. And in every field, I've done every field in, in, com in computing. I've, you know, I, I've done so many software languages. Uh, mostly I've done mostly C programming. That's, you know, that's the bulk of what I've done in my life. But I've used every language imaginable. At least uh, if it's a semi-popular, I've used it at some point. So, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I know a thing or two. And it, it, it just bugs me when I have to hear the trolls because uh, some of you might listen to them. But if you're not listening to them, then there's no problem. Just don't listen to these fools because uh, uh, some of them are talking, you can't do RFID from a distance. It uses induction. And, you know, it's like somebody's still in the back back backward days here induction was rfid number one from i don't know 20 years ago the very first rfid was in it was in fact induction not the new ones not the new ones called uh generation b gen gen 2 what is it uh i forgot the designation but it's a uh, is it epc epc gen 2 there's a designation for the commercial RFID. Uh, I sent my video. I forgot. I forgot what the designation is. I think it's EPC or something. I could be wrong. But anyway, the, the point is, the point is you, you, you understand what I'm talking about. So before I go on, before I go on, guys, let me just uh, interrupt for a moment with my sponsor, which is Linode. So Linode is a cloud service provider. If you want to put up a server... Uh, you can use Linode. Now, why would you need a server? Especially, why would you need a Linux server? One of the best uses of, of a cloud server is to use Nextcloud. So, they actually have Nextcloud. You can actually pick Nextcloud from their menu and say, install this app on the server, and they do it for you, and then you just use it. Uh, another use is to uh, use your uh, own XMPP server, which is about as private as can be with communications. There's nothing more private than your own XP XMPP server. It's going to be more private than Signal. And you can run it for as cheaply as five bucks a month. Uh, another, word, another one is, uh, you know, do uh, Jitsi. You can run a Jitsi server, which can be your, your equivalent to Zoom. And if you run that, I mean, obviously you need tech skills to do this, but if you do so, then you will be uh, more secure than ever. Or you may want to just run a Linux server just to play and learn how to run a Linux server. Maybe you want to build a website, use WordPress or whatever, and they can all do that for you and you pre have it even pre-installed on a $5 server. So if you want to think about a, a, uh, a server, think about Linode. It's been my provider. I myself use a lot of Linode servers. So I... Uh, don't put your servers at home. Somebody was asking me this. Can you do, put a server at home using port forwarding? Can you do email at home? Can you do uh, any kind of server at home? And the answer is, hell zucking no. Do not do port forwarding in your house. Do not do anything in your house that will expose your computers to a hacker. And the best way to do that is to do, to do port forwarding. It is a simple matter for somebody like me to go scan your ports and find out what kind of devices you have in your your network and assume that I can go in there and attack you. I'll find out what server you have, break in, and then before long I'm in your network. And then that's your server. So you don't want to do that. If you put it on a remote server, it's very hard to do that. Okay, because there's security built in to these, uh, like a Linode network. So you can't just go do that. because And it's even if they break in, it'll be isolated to the device, and you can just tear that down and start again. So, yeah, don't don't put it in your house. That's not a good idea. Unless you want to do a next cloud with no internet, that you can do. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> um, let me uh, focus on your questions here. So end of my rant here, my rant portion, and I will now look at your questions. And, uh, and while I'm looking for, for questions uh, that I can answer, I can 
keep talking about what I'm talking about with the radio. So what I'm talking about is be careful with buying IoT devices because you are actually supporting the bad guys by doing that. We don't even know what's in our TVs. We don't know anything. And at some point, you know, you may want to say, well, I may want to jam this. I may want to, you know, use some sort of detector to find out which device. You may want to do things, simple things like unplug a device that you don't think should be spying on you. For example, a TV. So you may have to put a, pass a TV through a, uh, a, uh, a manual, you know, power switch where you can turn the TV off, you know, electrically from the power, not just as standby. So if you turn the TV off, then, you know, I, I don't mean off by it's still in power. I mean off off, meaning no power. So that's some of the ways we can we can prevent these kinds of things. A TV is one of the scariest things here because they've already proven that they were spying on your TV. This was on WikiLeaks. Uh, the um, the uh, three-letter agency uh, papers. Uh, what was that called? Um, anyway, there were th two three-letter agencies that were covered, you know, with WikiLeaks. Uh, and the one, uh, the Zucking IA was the one that uh, had a program that could actually listen on your TV. They turn your speaker into a microphone. So they're able to do that specifically on a Samsung TV because they had the software or they were able to override the software of Samsung. So when people say, oh, this is, you know, you're talking whatever nonsense, uh, you know, apparently you're not in cybersecurity. So you, you don't realize it can be done. So it can be done. Can be done. Vault 7, thank you. Two TVs only. Uh, so, uh, I have a, I have a idea for the video. This is, I think will be my next video and, uh, I'll just pass it on to you to think about my next video. I think, I think it's a good idea, but you know, I may change my mind, but at the moment, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about showing you what happens in a war game scenario, in a war scenario. If I wanted to start a war with the United States, for example, how would I use your data to attack the country at once? Because somebody says, I, I've got nothing to hide. Got nothing to hide. I, and nobody has anything to hide, right? You all have nothing to hide. But if you realize that the enemy has <laughs> all of these people that have nothing to hide in their database, and they can feed them all the same, the different information, customized pieces of data at one point. Some pretty scary stuff can be done. Uh, I bet you somebody could start a revolution with this kind of thing. Uh, all you did do, need is maybe a, a few physical signs just to make sure it looks real. Maybe, you know, blow a few have a few explosions somewhere. Then you have to kill anyone. You know, explode a few garbage cans. And, and you could probably start a revolution. Scary stuff. And somebody's gonna tell me, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, okay. So if you understand what, what I'm suggesting here, then you're gonna say, maybe you should really be careful about your data. Because the ones that don't have their data profiled, They'll be the ones who'll be able to be sane and say, oh, that's false. But the ones who are so happy to share their lives on Facebook, they're going to be zocked, zocked, big time. I got ABC's attention. No, actually, they had, this was a, a war game scenario that they, they already tested this. Okay? They already tested this. This is not, this is not, uh, uh, theoretical. There was already a war game scenario that tested this, and I'm sure they, they're doing more and more. But 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 the average person doesn't realize this: that someone could manipulate your data, and in a very short term, we're talking about you know one two days, uh, 
somebody could shut us all down, shut us all down. We don't know what's going on and everybody can be in panic and everybody's rushing out with their guns elsewhere and be uh, uh, causing furor because they were told something happened. And yet it may not have happened. Uh, just think about, you know, so in Haiti, they, somebody, uh, somebody assassinated the president of Haiti. Uh, and I'm just thinking about that in a, in a smaller scale, in a smaller country. It would have been easy to send this information, even if it wasn't real, and then use it to do other things. In a small country, it would you know this is something that the the three letter agencies have been doing since you know way back. During the Cold War, they were doing a lot of this with all these little countries that were like, you know, trying to influence them to put them into their s sphere of influence, and they were doing things like this all the time. Uh, well, it's easier now, and it's, it's so targeted, they can actually send different information to each and every one of you, depending what your hot button is. And the only ones that they will not be able to, to figure out are guys like me, or, one, or maybe a good number of you here, who are more careful with their data, where they can't, they can't reach you. We'll be the saviors because we'll be the ones to know they're talking f false stuff. We will be the ones able to say what's false. The average person isn't going to know. So yeah, so yeah, nothing to hide. Well, those will be the idiots when those that, when a day like that ever arrives. They will be the idiots, and the problem is they will suck us all. They will suck us all because, uh, you know, they'll believe what they want to believe and they don't know anything and they will believe what they want to believe and, and, uh, and uh, maybe cause some panic and, uh, you know. So a lot of misinformation. If somebody wants to, to get misinformation, it's so easy. I mean, there's a bunch of people that will spread any kind of misinformation if they think it's consistent with what they believe. And a lot of people don't even research, you know, did, did Janice McAfee actually say something about a, a condo, a condo in, uh, in Florida? Somebody actually put that, said, Janice McAfee said this on, and then gave a date. Well, I've been, you know, I, uh, I'm, uh, John McAfee followed me and I, and I know Janice, I've talked to Janice uh, McAfee many many times and uh, and I'd read her post and there was no such thing there was no f such post so yeah so it's you can see it's easy to, to imagine somebody could say something and before you do the check the fact check you would already believe it because you're predestined to believe it and that's how vulnerable every one of us are and it's, that vulnerability exists because you can be targeted with information. Okay? You can be targeted. If they know what you want, you can be targeted. So, is McAfee really dead? Um, yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it, he probably is dead, yes. And that really still saddens me. I... Kelp farming here, you know, will put some more insults about uh, McAfee. But uh, and somebody made a comment that McAfee was spreading dangerous information because he wanted to basically switch us over to hidden currencies, currencies where the government can't track it, and they are not going to let anyone do that. And that, in fact, I didn't actually think about that, but that. That actually is is a very good reason to yeah to uh, to suicide to suicide him because he was promoting something that would take the control away from government powers and they don't want that they don't even want anybody to speak about it so I don't recommend anything King Singh not on YouTube not on YouTube. I don't talk about, uh, you know, uh, much crypto. Uh, YouTube is a dangerous place to talk crypto. You, you'd be, I don't know why, but uh, many channels have been, have been uh, canceled on YouTube 
because they talked about crypto. Why? What's wrong with crypto? I have no idea. But since it's not my uh, it's not my focus, then let's not talk about it. But uh, um, yeah, should you use do crypto? Um, let's just say McAfee had it right. <laughs> let's just say that. I won't say much more. Okay, I won't say much more. So yeah, I can't, you know, there's so many limitations. There's so many things you cannot talk about on YouTube. And, I, you know, if you think I'm not censored here, you got to be kidding me. In, in order for me to get to my 300 plus thousand subscribers where I'm at now, which is quite a shock to even get there. To three, can you imagine that? And I got to 300,000 plus. Uh, a moment ago, it was a 308. So, you know, so I'm already... Uh, close to 309, 309,000. I mean, that is like, zuck. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty major number. Uh, but uh, I gotta be careful because, uh, you know, with, with this kind of popularity comes uh, fear, fear that somebody could shut you down if you, you, you push the buttons of the powers to be too much. So, so I'm just going to focus on things that, you know, we can fight and that I can teach you about and then not worry too much about things that I cannot because there are other people who will talk well about it and, um, and I'll just say, go to them. They talked well about it. I'm okay with that. Um, so, so anyway, uh, the other thing I want to, there, there was something else I wanted to, to, uh, what the Zuck, yes. Um, what was that I was, wanted to talk about? Uh, anyway, I forgot. It was on the top of my head what I wanted to tell you, and I lost it, so I'll talk about it a little later. Nevertheless, he is still alive. <laughs> okay? Whatever. Yes, stick to your knitting. <laughs> Do you follow the dollar vigilante? Go, go watch the Dollar Vigilante. You don't have to ask me that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, goodness, it's, it's uh, yeah, dangerous to mess with things like that. And, you know, so I won't, I won't. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's not key to my model here. So you guys know what I believe in. Some of you know even more about what I believe in and uh, things I can't talk about. Uh, things that I can't even show uh, in my prior in my prior uh, social media channel on Periscope, uh, I had uh, props. If you know what props I'm talking about, and I, I can't use those props here. They, they, if I use those props, I'd be uh, I'd be uh, canceled here pretty quickly too. So even though it's just a prop, can't do it. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So, you know, we want to, uh, like, for example, uh, James Corbett was, was canceled here on YouTube. He had like 500,000 subscribers and he was canceled on YouTube, even though he's been here for, I don't know, 15 plus years on YouTube. And he was canceled because he challenged the science of, of, uh, you know, vaccine stuff. So that was clearly in the conditions of YouTube that you do not do this, and if you do, then uh, then you uh, you get canceled. So since again, it's not my main deal, I'm going to not talk about stuff like that. What about my piano, Soul King? Soul King is back. Soul King is back. So some of you. Wow, I'm seeing a few people from Periscope days. You got to have one foot in their world and the other in yours. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, Corbett lifted the veil for so many. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you got to be, uh, you got to take what I say in suggestions 
and don't don't let me talk about it. One of them is the question. Can I jam the radio frequencies? Can I jam the radio frequencies? And I answered that, but I don't think people really got what I was trying to say because, you know, I'm trying to be subtle here. And um, there's there's a lot of ham radio police, so you got to be careful. You know, the ham radio police will go in because it's not to the letter of the law. Well, I'm going to tell you again. I'm going to repeat it, and if you are sensible, you'll understand what I mean. Okay, again, repeating this. It is possible using an SDR radio, such as the one I have, which is called Blade RF. There's another one called Hack, uh, Hack, uh, Hack RF1. There's another one, uh, there's so many models of little radios you can plug into your computer. They're called software-defined radios. So using software that you can find uh, software uh, that can that can uh, use these radios and you can actually send a signal uh, of uh, any type to any frequency and one of the signals you can send is something called a um, Gaussian noise. I said that in the video if you want to check the spelling. And then from the software you set, set, send Gaussian noise within a frequency range and I gave you the frequency range for for these devices, which is 2.402 to 2.408 gigahertz. If you have a ham radio license, you can set up a test laboratory in your house that can send out a jamming frequency of short distance with a dummy load antenna, so it's just hitting a personal space. And you can basically enclose a very small area into a non-detectable jamming capability where you can jam just around you by sending this Gaussian noise and then it will actually interrupt these kinds of messages going around near you such as if your TV is sending a signal you can block that in your personal space okay if you have a ham radio license okay so this is laboratory use this is not like sending out a big signal uh, you know, disrupt your neighborhood. This is with a dummy load antenna. You can actually do this and do it within a personal space, which is fine. You can do that. Okay? So if you want to research, that's a key point here, want to research radio frequencies in a laboratory, you could install one of these devices, run uh, common software, using that can uh, use these radios and be able to send send a signal that can block certain frequency ranges like 2.402 to 2.48 and that's where these traffic that's where this traffic actually goes okay so there <clears throat> if you want to do research that is possible jamming is illegal okay jamming is illegal so don't do any mass jamming that's illegal and you will be found by the way if you have a, if if you have a, a strong signal the fcc can find that and then they can go track you and they'll be at your door but they have the little cars they have this cheap cheap little cars that have a little screen on them and they, they probably have like antennas all over the city they can triangulate and then they drive to where you are and they can find stuff if the signal is strong enough okay so you know in case you uh, you uh, didn't get what I was trying to tell you you probably still didn't get what I was trying to tell you but you know uh, yes research with a ham license. It's very easy to get a tech ham license. The first level ham license is easy. You know, just do the online online tests and then take the test and then you're legal. Okay? So, I already answered that, Leon. Jamming is illegal, as I said. You may want to replay what I just said. 
okay you may want to research now now uh, later on it, it we'll see if you know I can actually uh, show you the laboratory experiment for my end. I I don't have time right now but uh, but uh, you know show you what uh, there are actual other channels have already shown this so if you want to if you you're in a rush and you want to see somebody do it uh, as an experiment then there's one I want you to go watch and that is the the Danish hacker the Danish hacker he has many radio frequency um, videos including this one where he does a, a specific thing to jam he can also he changed the uh, GPS he uh, he basically overrode the GPS signal again within a laboratory environment affecting only him okay so Amazon bought Arlo oh my gosh now Arlo too oh my gosh I believe it's the Danish hacker the Danish hacker yeah so the Danish hacker yeah, he hacked GPS he has a blade RF like I do so he has the same exact equipment I have and I believe he's using Windows and uh, and the software that you can download is all free and he has it so you know same stuff uh, you must want to get kicked out as an experiment you get, must want to get kicked out as an experiment one who waits one who waits how are you doing heal the hacker crazy Danish hacker sorry that I forgot the crazy part the crazy Danish hacker you follow that guy he hasn't been doing videos lately but you know he has like 50,000 subscribers great channel kind of technical but uh, yeah crazy yes crazy so sorry for missing the crazy part because I was just doing it from memory so um, if you're you know more advanced and you want to actually see how he does does the hacking then you know he can he can show you he has more time because he you know he does more specialized videos and he that's what he does whereas I'm more of a you know talking ideas and I if I have to do that and make videos like that I, I won't be able to make many videos so I, I can only do that in a limited way so uh, you know I, I, I have to I have to in order to sustain this channel I, I have to be providing you with concepts and trying to prove it uh, individually is uh, probably not a good use of time so if I can I will do it it's, you know obviously he can do it I can do it I mean there's not, there's nothing special in what he's doing that you know there's no no big secret to the software is using you know it's the same stuff you know hacking techniques is using and there are some things I do so uh, do you think that the RFID that is in fiat money trackable with these mesh networks you've been talking about um, there is no RFID in fiat money US fiat money somebody somebody said there was RFID in fiat money and then uh, uh, somebody actually tested that and there is no RFID in fiat money okay so but there is an RFID in your in your enhanced driver's license uh, theoretically in most states there is no RFID in your real ID uh, many of them backed out of the RFID uh, insertion like California did California was about to put RFID into the real ID and then they backed down so uh, I know that uh, certain states like Connecticut was it Connecticut um, New York and so on they have RFID but I don't know if it's only enhanced driver sizes or not I actually don't know for sure so so passport is yes there is an RFID in your passport Arlo is a security camera just like uh, blink and ring so if Arlo is going to be purchased by Amazon we are zocked again is it true that 17 Hertz affects reptiles 
Do you know what 17 hertz is? That's, um, um, you're getting into voice now. You're getting into voice. Um, agency trolls, uh, uh. Time, uh, okay. When will you sell the Google, new the Google phone models? I am selling what I can sell. So the latest model I've added is a Pixel 4a. So there is now Pixel 4a's in the store. And I'm slowly, you know, uh, removing some other models that uh, are getting more expensive now because there's no stock and so the we're, we're basically running out of moto models that i can do so we we can't we uh, we're running out of models we can do so the ones that uh, are long-term production ones are pixel 3 pixel 4 pixel 4a so and at some point, I presume Pixel 5. Uh, where can I find your store? It's uh, go to brax.me. And when you sign up, it's, uh, it's in the menu. Pixel 5 works with Calyx OS. Okay, so that means it will, it will be supported soon. So Pixel 4a is a good phone. Uh, Pixel 4a is uh, smaller. I may have a Pixel 4a in here. I'm not sure. It's a smaller phone. No, this is not a 4a. Okay, yeah, this is a this is a Pixel 4a. It's very light much smaller this is a 5g phone but it's very small okay it's 128 gigabytes so so that's the latest model that i'm i have because the other model the other new model is the five the uh pixel 5 pixel 5 which i don't support as of yet so pixel 3 and up um, his definition of what he can convert is based on price and stock. Yes. Yeah, certain brands, for example, uh, I can't get a big supply of one plus six. You know, there's, that's one that, uh, I have one here. This is a, this is somebody else's phone. This was sent to me. I said the Google phone. So one plus six. Uh, I think I have another one plus six. So it's, Two people sent me a one plus six, so one plus six can be degoogled easily, but I can't buy them in volume. So since I buy in volume, then I can only get what I can get. So if it's not available, then can't do it. Uh, the Moto models I had, I was selling like several Moto models, so Motorola Motos. And uh, they're they're running out of stock, so I, I'm at, at very soon. I'm, they're already going up in price, which means the stock is disappearing. So, so they're actually becoming more expensive because they're more rare. So people are selling them for selling them for almost double now. So for that reason, I, I will uh, likely run out of Moto G7 Pluses at some point. I can only get them in small volumes right now. Okay. So G seven's nowhere to be seen in New Zealand. Uh, voice in your head is nanobots. <laughs> uh, what about? Do you have any home camera systems you recommend? Well, my home camera systems were ones I made. So I made my own. I have 
and I can't make them anymore, but uh, yeah. And these are home camera systems I made. Okay? So these are made to be wired. So they're only connected to the ethernet here. That's the only wire. And so I have several of these and that uh, powers the security in my home. And I also have these. I made these two. These are radar radar devices. They're actually uh, it's called, see that BRAC secure net. And uh, and basically you you uh, you press the button and it activates the alarm and anyone that comes within range of this sets off an alarm and will will alert your your phone or whatever and it will beep and so I built those two but I cannot do them right now so uh, what's the best to use anything that's not affiliated with Amazon's probably Anything that's not filled with Amazon or Google uh, are probably your best bet. Uh, who are those? That's the hard part. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I don't like to promote like uh, Simply Safe, for example, but they're not owned by either one. So, you know, that's a little bit of a plus. We, Rob, we don't care if you're old. <laughs> That's a funny comment. Okay, I'm old. Uh, very busy in no time. GSM phones are the best. Uh, GSM phones, well, nobody has GSM, old GSM anymore. It's everything is LTE. Um... Generation, generation, tell me about what? Okay. So if you had a choice, let's say you uh, used, uh, you know, actually you can go to Amazon and find some cameras. That they're likely made in China. I was using one of them before. And you can install those. And as long as you do not use any feature that connects it to the Internet, they will be fine. Don't connect them to the Internet. My fear is if they put some... Uh, uh, some uh, IoT chip in them. That's the worry, and that's what we don't know about. Because if somebody does that, then somebody could change the software and have it do something else. Okay, so you know, obviously, you know, I trust what I built. The Raspberry Pi, they don't have those chips. My my cameras are Raspberry Pi cameras. So because the Raspberry Pi, they do not have dangerous chips of that sort uh, because of Raspberry Pi standardized Raspberry Pi does not have these chips that we're talking about what do you think about the Pixel 5 uh, uh, I'm sure when they support uh, being degoogled then I'll sell them but Pixel 5s and Pixel 4a's are 5G phones so careful they're 5G phones Wow, you really are restricted. How am I restricted? So in any case, when I use my own camera system, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm able to use the internet. I mean, I, you, you know, I send it to my app BraxMe. And, uh, and so you can actually uh, send alerts there, but not the video. You don't need to send the video remotely you just need to send the alert so it's really dangerous to forward you know I, I mean you can trust me if you send video if you have that service if I offered it but yeah you can still get 4g but uh, but uh, you know you would really be safer if you didn't do that if you didn't forward the video just forward the notification that's all you need so uh, if you remove apps pre-installed in Realme phone, Android 11, the phone goes into soft brick type boot loop, DuckDuckGo. Well, it, it sometimes it goes in a boot loop if you, if you, uh, if it detects that you're messing around uh, with the bootloader. 
because it it basically the way it works, uh, Mickey Leaks, is there's a uh, CRC code that sa says okay let's do a let's do a you know some some of the the directory entries, and then they they do a, they um, um, they uh, take the hash of that, and if the hash changes of the files in the directory, then it means it's been manipulated. And so if you root something, and the hash changes, then then you know they would do that. The other thing they do is check if the version goes backward. If you put software that's older on the OS side of things, then it will go into boot loop. That's what one of the things that uh, many manufacturers do on their phones. So it's not not quite unusual to do that. But it also per if, if they put in some spyware in there, you may not be able to take it out. So you got to be careful. Do RFID wallet cases work? Uh, yeah, I'm sure they will work if they're a good brand. Yes, they will work. Faraday cages will work, but uh, Faraday bags beg the question, why not just turn off the device? But RFIDs will be protected by, by a Faraday bag. But, but otherwise, just turn the device off. I'm not sure what the advantage of a Faraday bag versus just turning off the device. Let's go to Tokyo Olympics. Lenny PR, how are you doing, buddy? So I see uh, many people here now from the old Periscope days. So you guys are like lonely now. You don't have Periscope. So come on in. You're all welcome here. All welcome. Amazon built New Zealand's you-know-what tracer app. Zuck. <laughs> Wouldn't doubt that. They probably put facial recognition in there too. Won't a Faraday bag block GPS tracking? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but turn it off. Like I said, it's not that, you know, a Faraday bag will work. That That's a given. Question is, how is that better than turning it off? So, they want to turn your DNA so they can track your... DNA with Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, people make this comment, so I'm going to make it clear. I do not believe there's RFID in, in your vaccine. Please, I do not believe there's an RFID in your vaccine. There are many other ways of using RFID. That is not a good one. And the reason I gave you was that RFID needs an antenna. So you can't make a microscopic RFID without an antenna. The antenna is basically the bulk. The microchip portion of the RFID is very, very tiny. It's basically a dot, a period in a sentence, smaller even. Yes, yeah, so the actual microchip of an RFID is extremely tiny, but the antenna is huge. The antenna could be 100 times bigger than the chip or maybe more. For that reason, what would an RFID in your body do if you don't have an antenna? So, and besides, your body is blocking the signal, so it needs an even bigger antenna. So since it can't do that, then the only way that an RFID will work in your body is near field. And it w requires a fairly big device, which is what they inject in pets. Okay? So pets... Uh, can receive an RFID encased in glass, and it's fairly big, it's like a capsule, and uh, with enough space for an antenna, and it's located just under the skin, so it's not like, you know, injected deep in your muscles, okay? It's injected, it's, it's basically just put in under the skin, that's where you put the RFID in a pet. So, and even that is near field. You can't check that from a distance because the antenna won't work. It's going to be blocked by, by water in your body. Okay, so that I don't think is, is, uh, is good use of resources because they already know who had a vaccine. That is not a secret. If they know your identity. They know if you had a vaccine. How do I know this? Because I was in medical. 
I built medical software. I sent government data about what happens to you when you go to the doctor's office and ICD-10 codes and CPT-4 codes and all this are sent to the government and there will be an ICD-9 saying, uh, you know, COVID vaccination and there will be uh, a CPT-4 code that says the vaccine procedure. That will be in your medical record. It will be sent to the government and they already know you by social security number, by name and all the identifiers as far as who got a vaccine and who didn't. And, and it's, uh, um, yeah, and you know, mark my words, if they want to go door to door and say you haven't gotten a vaccination, they will be able to do that if they actually wanted to do that. That's the kind of evil this can go into. Okay, my feeling is we already, those who, those who wanted to get a vaccination are able to get a vaccination. Done. Those who do not want to get a vaccination take a risk. So who cares? They made the choice. Why does the government need to get involved? I don't get it. If a person thinks, because there is a danger to, to, uh, to uh, vaccination, there is a danger, the danger is real. And, uh, you know, and the answer is, oh, we, we got to vaccinate everyone. Well, if some person thinks that they shouldn't be vaccinated for whatever reason, uh, because they, they feel that there's a danger, then uh, this is their choice. You know, why, why do we all need to, uh, you know, you, if you vaccinated yourself, you don't need to care. If you're vaccinated and you got through it without any problems, then you don't need to care, then move on. It's not your life. Basically, you want to control other people's lives. So, yes, the, the spike protein apparently is not just a spike protein, but it is in itself can cause its own set of problems. And uh, they were trying to hide that even on YouTube. And the spike protein is something that we can be sensitive to, as some medical professionals have already found. Even if they're pro-vaccine, they've already found that the spike protein is actually uh, able to cause a reaction in some people, including heart disease, if you're sensitive to that spike protein. Okay? So, if one member of your family reacted to spike protein, then genetically, then it could be many of you will react to spike protein, in which case it makes sense when somebody says, well, we better stop doing this because one of us got zucked. Okay, that makes sense. So, pull back. But yet the government says, oh, yeah, we got to go mess with everyone. You, you know, we're mostly all protected. And uh, for those who are not protected, then, you know, why, why not let them make that choice? I don't get it. It's like everyone wants to... Everyone wants to... Uh, do complete control, right? So I, I uh, you know, I go to the post office and they still require a mask here in California to go to the post office, even though restaurants don't. So I'm like, you know, I, some of these rules are so inconsistent, I, I don't even know what the point is. So anyway, uh, you can, my, my feeling is you can believe what you want to believe, it's a free choice. And it's okay. But according to YouTube and according to, to the government, then they decide the choices. You don't really have any choices. Even though, as we found, that they should have listened more closely because there were some issues. Okay? So there's no doubt the vaccine has some issues with certain people. This is not, you know, this is not a, uh, YouTube considered this a conspiracy theory way back last year. Nowadays, we already know this is true. It causes some people to have some sort of uh, heart problem because the spike protein itself is reactive in some people. Okay, so yes, exercise your right the way you want, the way you want. So yeah, if you 
want to do it, you should do it. If you don't, then don't do it. That's your choice. Um, anyway, your brain is getting tired. Why is your brain getting tired? You all need yachts. Yes, follow my yacht, yachting channel. So, um, the yachting channel is not just about sailing. It's, it's basically, a, you know, a, a experimental platform for doing off-grid stuff. So I put in solar. You know, it's expensive to do these things, though, so I can't do everything. But, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's equipped to, at some point, be an independent uh, emergency bug-out vehicle that can actually go around the world. And, uh, you know, it's, it's capable of doing that. It can go around the world. And uh, am I a libertarian? I guess you could call me that. So if you want to follow my channel on sailing, the off-grid sailing project, then uh, it's, it's on the channel description there. And you can uh, check that out. If you're not interested in sailing, uh, it's not all sailing, but if you're interested in see where these videos are made, I'm actually doing the videos from from the boat. It uh, it, it has very good lighting, and uh, it's you know it's good space in there that I cannot uh, always get, and l the lighting especially is just so much better on the boat. So so go watch me on that. Okay, so, uh, um, and then I have a jazz channel. If you, you know, I'm a musician. So, uh, if you want to watch that. Uh, although we don't have gigs right now, we are starting to play music, uh, you know, in, in a jam session. And I'm recording it and posting it on the channel. So, if you want to hear music, uh, you can watch there. Okay. So, anyway, I'm running out of time here. So, uh, uh I won't be able to take that many questions here. Sailing sounds cool, but I don't have the money for it. Uh, sailing uh, can doesn't have to be expensive. You know, you can you can buy boats for cheap. I mean, I've had I've had uh, boats that were much cheaper. I've I've been sailing for a very long time, so I had you know, I started off with a dinghy, that didn't cost that much, and then I got my first keel boat. And then I got a little larger keelboat, and uh, now I have a much larger keelboat. So, so it's uh, it's a progression, but they were all capable at one point or the other. So my last boat before this one had, you know, had uh, lithium batteries. I, I did that. I was going to do videos on them, but uh, uh, I got rid of it. So I guess I didn't have to do the videos. So, but that was going to be my platform and. It, it was an inexpensive boat, so it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It's not, you don't have to spend so much money. Uh, e what uh, what camera what what is expensive is living in Cal. Did you say Cali? Nobody says Cali. I don't live in Colombia. Gonna. Gonna be the first to comment. What? Gonna be the first to comment. What? Just wish there is fish. Uh, inside. Uh, wow, so many comments here. So I, I'm, uh, anyway, I'm running out of time. So I'm just trying to pick something that uh, is brief that I can, uh, I can quickly answer. So, Anyway, uh, in the absence of a specific question, so things really haven't changed. And I get, I get asked this question all the time. Do I need to do anything special? And I keep telling you about the Google phones. And, and people say, you know, when they get to the Google phone, do I have to do anything special? And, and you, hello, Frank May, 73. So one of the things that I keep telling you is a the Google phone has no identity. Nobody actually knows who has your phone. So when you're doing anything on the phone, nobody knows it's this phone. Yeah, you may log into Spotify, let's say. So at the moment you're on Spotify, they know you're on Spotify. When you're not running Spotify, they don't know it's this phone. Nobody knows it's this phone except for the SIM card. The carrier knows. 
But aside from the carrier, nobody else knows on a D Google phone. So you don't have to do anything special. All the issues have already been eliminated. All the tracking that Google does is gone. Okay? So you really don't have to worry much about anything once you get a Google phone. In fact, you know, the mere fact you have a Google phone, it's all done. You can run any app you want. It doesn't matter. The, all the tracking will fail. It doesn't have even the Google Advertising ID or GAID. There is no GAID -G on the Google phone, which was one of the identifiers. There's no way to identify this, even for advertising. Why can we trust Linode? I, I don't trust anybody. You encrypt your own servers the way you want. You don't trust anyone. Okay, so thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, I give you my idea for my next video. And uh, hopefully the idea becomes... Uh, becomes an actual, I have to write the script for that. So I'm trying to figure that out, but I think it's a good idea. So I'm thinking it out completely and we'll see if that video comes out next week. Talk to you later guys. Thank you for joining me on this Friday 300K celebration. I'll change the title. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.